Hi everyone, it's Kathy. Uh, just a quick demo for the exercise number two, chapter 11, AutoCAD 2018 for the interior designer. And this is the hinge that we're going to create. And once we're done with this and set up the uh, viewports, uh, we can actually import, make a block of this hinge and import it into our exercise number three, which is the hutch. So this is the hinge for the hutch. Uh, a couple things that you're going to set up before you get started. Number one, you're going to already have your text, your notes text, in a um, annotative style already set up through the chapter. You're also going to have your interior design dimensions already set up, and then your multi-leader interior design multi-leader already set up. Um, those are the ones you're going to be using. The other thing you're going to do is make sure in the Home tab that in your layers, you create the correct layers for this project. The layers that I want you to create are, first of all, the object layer. That's what you're going to draw the hinge on, is the object layer. The object layer, layer is uh, color white, continuous, and you can make this a 0 0.30 millimeter if you like. Uh, it's okay with me if you leave it as default. Um, we want to make sure that it prints, so you want to make sure that nothing is uh, checked here. Uh, there are some additional dimension layers that the author has created, the sheet dims, the viewport 1 dims, and viewport 2 dims. Uh, you can go ahead and use those and separate the, the dimensions as you create dimensions in the different viewports. Um, that's fine. That way you can turn them on and off so that it's not so confusing when you're looking at it in model space because these are annotative. Um, it's up to you how you want to create these. I will use the ones as they are here. So uh, we'll be using V1 for the dimensions and text in viewport 1 and V2 for the dimensions and text in viewport 2. And then we want to create a viewport layer itself. Um, now your, yours are going to be turned on, so ignore the fact that I have these turned off. I have these turned off because I already have them created and I don't want you to get confused on um, what you're looking at in my model space. Uh, viewport itself, you're going to create a viewport layer. Again, everything we're just leaving as white for this exercise. Um, but the viewport layer, we want it to be non-print. So we want to make sure that there, you check this box so that it does not print. Okay, so that's how your layers should be set up. I'm going to go ahead and close that. And we want to make sure that we are actually in the object layer and that it, that is our current layer. Whoops. And then that, that object layer is our current layer before we start drawing. I'm going to leave the hinge here and I'm going to copy it, make another one off to the left, or sorry, off to the right here. Uh, so the first thing that you want to do is, based on the dimensions in the text um, in exercise 2, your overall rectangle is 2 inches by 3 inches. So we're going to start right there. So we're going to do rectangle, and we're going to select the bottom corner, and 2, tab, 3, enter. So there's our overall. Uh, one of the other things I want you to set up before we go any further is the object snap. So select your object snap, make sure it's turned on, and then in your object snap settings, we want to make sure that midpoint is checked and perpendicular, along with the other default um, object snaps that are usually already set for you. But this is what you should have checked for your object snap settings. All right, so now we're going to do a series of offset commands. So offset, I type in O, and the um, hinge is offset three quarters of an inch from the top to the, the middle part of the hinge. So we're going to start with that three quarters of an inch. And um, oh, whoops, I forgot. We do have to explode. So before we do anything else, after we make the rectangle, we explode it. So now we can do a series of offsets. So three quarters of an inch is our first offset. And we're going to go from the top down and from the bottom up. Repeat that command. Our new um, offset dimension is going to be one half inch and we're going to offset the sides in one half inch. Now we can do a trim, so trim and then select a selection box from the right to the left, right click, and we can start to get rid of the lines that we don't need. And now we have that overall outline of our hinge. Next I want to make this middle part here and that is centered. So the easiest way to do that is to go to the uh, construction line. 
I select the construction line, vertical, and we just want to grab that midpoint. That's why I wanted you to have your midpoint snap turned on. And right click enter, uh, repeat the command, offset. And we want to offset this construction line to each side by one eighth of an inch. The whole thing itself is one quarter of an inch. So we type in one eighth and we go to the uh, right and we go to the left. Erase the one that's in the middle, the original construction line, and then trim. Oh, I'm sorry, don't trim yet. Uh, we're going to offset, this sticks up a bit by an eighth of an inch. So we're going to offset this line an eighth of an inch up. So offset again, one eighth inch, and we go up and down. Trim. Again, I like to select all the lines, right click, and we're going to fence around these to get rid of those. Uh, repeat the trim command again. Um, and then we are going to remove the lines that we don't need. Enter. Uh, now this is offset half an inch down to create these other two lines here. So we're going to offset again, one half inch. And select this little line here and go down, and this little line here and go up. The only thing left are the screws, so that would be the circle command. And we want to pick the center point off to the side here. And we want to click on the diameter or type in D, and our diameter is 3 sixteenths. Okay, now we can zoom in. So this is the size of the screw, 3 sixteenths. Uh, next, we need to create the um, place for the screwdriver, the little hole for the screwdriver. So we're going to click on the construction line command one more time, click the center of this circle, and we can just kind of rotate around until we get an angle that we kind of like. So click that angle, enter, and then repeat the command, offset. And our offset is going to be um, half of 1 16th, which is 1 32nd. So uh, offset 1 32nd and select the construction line and go to the left and to the, to the right. Enter. And now we can erase the middle line. Enter. And then we can trim. So select the circle. Oops, I didn't mean to erase it. Trim. Select the circle. And then trim away the lines on the outside from your construction line. And now you have your screw created properly. Uh, finally, where do we put the screw? There are three places on each side. They are centered to these little flanges and centered to the middle. So best way to do that to find those locations is to select again the construction line and we want vertical and we want to pick the midpoint of both of those and then we want to repeat the command and do horizontal and pick the center point. And then we're going to offset the construction line from this bottom line up. And that dimension is given to us, and that is 3 eighths of an inch. And down 3 eighths of an inch. Okay, so now we have our, um, our intersections at the exact point where the center of our screw needs to go. So now we can move the first one, or we can do a copy. Um, let's just do copy for all of them. So we're going to click on the copy command, select just a screw, nothing else. Select the midpoint of the circle. And then we're going to match that up because we have our O snap on to the intersections of each of our construction lines. Enter. And now we can erase the construction lines and the extra screw that we don't need. And there we are. So that's the actual construction of the hinge. The next thing we want to do is set up our viewports. So in order to set up our viewports, we're going to click on the layout tab, the first layout tab that is automatically created. You can see both of my hinges, the original one and the one I just created. If I double click inside this uh, existing viewport, it start, it becomes dark, the line becomes dark, and you can see that I'm inside the model space now. And I can kind of slide over, I want to put the hinge kind of to the left a little bit. 
Uh, first thing I want to do is set up the uh, scale of the viewport and the um, text requires this to be set to a viewport scale of 1 to 1. So I can select the scale area here, click on 1 to 1, and it should zoom in to that scale. Um, I want to lock this viewport and then double click outside. Uh, I can adjust the size of the viewport slightly. Um, I want to leave enough room to get all of my dimensions in. Escape. Okay, now I'm, not, I'm going to add that other viewport. Um, but in the meantime, I want to place this viewport on the viewport layer because I don't know if it is on the viewport layer or not. It's actually on the object layer. Uh, so I'm going to select it and then change that to be on the viewport layer. And then I also want to change my current layer to viewport. So now that my current layer is viewport, I can go up into the um, Insert, not this one that's in the tab area, but the, um, the one that is normally in your menu bar. So you want to make sure that it says show menu bar here, hide menu bar. Uh, but we want that menu bar to show. So uh, we're going to click on insert, I'm sorry, view in the menu bar. And then we look for viewports. And the viewports, we want to add one viewport. And this is going to be the screw detail. So I'm going to make a viewport about that big. I'm going to zoom in to one of these. And the viewport scale is supposed to be set to 4 to 1. So I'm going to go down here to viewport scale, change it to 4 to 1, let it zoom in, make sure it's locked, and then I'm done setting up my viewports. The next part is to add all of the dimensions that I need. Uh, so I'll start with the dimensions for the main, the big, the full hinge here. And I want to switch my current layer to viewport one, dims, and text. I want to turn that on actually. Okay, so viewport one, dims, and text. And this is what I'm going to um, create my um, dims my dimensions in viewport one, which I'm calling this one viewport one, I'm calling this one viewport two. Okay, so I want to double click inside to be in the model space. I want to go to annotate and I want to select the dimension, um, linear dimension. And now I'm going to start dimensioning it based on what the text has said. So with my O snaps on, I want to make sure that I can snap to all these different things that I need to dimension. The first one is the three quarters of an inch there. Uh, then we can dimension this. Uh, sorry, dimension. And I want to select this area. I want to get those endpoints and drag that one out to there. And then this dimension from here to here is a half inch. This dimension is one eighth. And then the dimension from the center of the circle of the screw. I zoom in, there's the center. From that point, to there, and that is three eighths, and then we have one quarter. We have the overall dimension here, two inches. We have the overall dimension here of three inches, and one half inch here. And then three quarters of an inch for this overall. Or I'm sorry, one and three quarters of an inch for this overall. And those are the dimensions that we are required to put in. Double click outside, or hit escape, double click outside. And that uh, is fully dimensioned to the hinge. Now we're going to go into the screw and dimension the screw. Again, I want to go back to my home tab, change to the view v2 dims and text i want to turn on make sure that's turned on 
Um, now I'm in a different layer so that I could turn that on and off if I want to. And um, I'm going to dimension this, so double click inside, linear dimension, pick these two endpoints, and that is 1 16th. And then I can type in dim radius and select circle, and it's going to give me. Oops, select the circle, try that again, dim radius, select the circle, and then it'll give me that radius that I can drag up and place where I want it to go, looks about right, click outside. Okay, so now this is the completed exercise, and if I go to file and plot preview, you'll see that the viewports do not show, but the rest of the hinge and the dimensions do show. That's it for exercise two. Um, I'll be on a different video showing you the Hutch exercise three. Thanks. Hope that helped. Bye.